Welcome to the Rope and Report. I'm your host, Jacob Guerra, where we bring you all the latest information when it comes to sightings or accounts around the world involving the field of cryptozoology. You're going to like some of the headlines we have for you today, folks. We'll start with our first story. Ten-year-old girl went for a walk on the beach and stumbled upon dinosaur footprints. The article was published by Popular Mechanics, story broke by Tim Newcomb on August 22nd. So this is new, folks. This is a new story, and I think you're going to like this. Let's take a look. Experts believe the footprints came from the Camelotia dinosaur, a lesser-known herbivore from the late Triassic period. The massive footprints are spaced about 30 inches apart and are a consistent pattern that indicates they were likely left behind by a dino. When 10-year-old Tegan and her mom, Claire, took a summer holiday stroll along the Welsh beach in the UK, she was likely hoping to find a neat seashell or two. Instead, she found something much better and much bigger. The mother-daughter pair traveled near the Vale of Glamorgan on the South Wales coast, which has become known as a bit of a hotspot for prehistoric finds. Still, it was quite a surprise when Tegan found a set of five massive footprints, each spaced about 30 inches from the other. Tegan's words were, It was so cool and exciting, Tegan told the BBC. We were just out looking to see what we could find. We found these big holes that looked like dinosaur footprints. So Mum took some pictures, emailed the museum, and it was from a long-necked dinosaur. Claire emailed the National Museum of Wales, where Cindy Howells is the paleontology curator. These footprints are so big. Howells told the BBC, the Dino Hunters program, it would have to be a type of dinosaur called a sauropodomorpha. I hope I said that right. Sauropodomorpha. More specifically, experts believe the type of sauropodomorpha was a camelotia, a herbivore from the late Triassic period, if you believe in time periods. A distinctive dinosaur known for its long neck, big body, long tail, and small head. The dinosaur, which probably stood about 10 feet tall and measured 16 feet long, is believed to have occasionally walked only on its hind legs and other times use all four feet to walk. Okay. The red slit stone at Lavin Rock Point between Cardiff and Barrie is known to contain prehistoric fossils. Dinosaur footprints have been found over the past century, and in 2014, on the same beach near the newly found footprints, two brothers discovered a full skeleton of a Draco raptor. Now I'm willing to bet these prints are not old, folks. Not by any long shot. What if these creatures are still roaming these parts, hmm? something to think about. It's amazing. Up until recently, we had so few dinosaur finds in Wales. We didn't think we had much in the way of dinosaurs here, Howells said. Now we're getting a footprint or bone find every five to six years, and we know we have continuous sequences of dinosaurs living in Wales over 15 million years or so. It's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing indeed. Anytime you have a youngster who finds something for themselves, that's pretty special. But I would say when you're going to say millions of years versus thousand, that's more delusion. The first clue that the new find was a dino was a lack of randoms in the pattern. Howell said that there was a constant distance between the five prints with what appeared to be left foot followed by a right foot, then a left, and then the right. It's quite a significant find, the buzz you get when someone contacts us with a definitive dinosaur find, Howell said. It's amazing. For Tegan and Claire, the beach walk turned into a better fossil hunt than most could ever imagined. Yeah. It's hard to comprehend you're walking on the same beach that hundreds of millions of years ago some massive prehistoric animal was here, Claire said. You can spend a lifetime looking for a dinosaur treasure. So for it to happen to Tegan at this age is great. I agree. So are these prints old? That's what I want to know, folks. Are they really as old as people believe them to be? I believe these are fresh tracks. And let me explain a little bit further. Most of the rocks that we see today are deposited during the global flood of Noah's day. The same goes with most fossils. The exception to these would be post-flood rocks, e.g. ice age sediments. But these are generally more rare, and the bones that are found in the post-flood events are usually less well preserved. 
This is because a flood provides the unique conditions for fossil formation that are not as readily available outside of the flood events. Likewise, most footprints don't last very long before they are weathered or eroded away. The exact flood boundary needs to be asserted on a case-by-case -case basis, and there are different flood conditions in different places at the same time. So during this time period, e.g. in some cases, the flood boundary would still exist, while other cases the receding waters of the flood would erode away the boundary layer. Okay. So in most cases, the flood boundary would round the uniformation called the transition between the quaternary and the neogene period neogene quaternary. Most rocks below that are flood rocks. So folks, as far as I'm aware, all dinosaur fossils are found below the KPG levels, evolutionists regardless as older than 65 million years ago. However, while biblical creationists view this as all flood deposits just a few thousand years ago. I want to thank Joel Tay for his continued friendship and research over the years. Joel is a scientist with an extensive background in paleontology work. Nonetheless, this is a fantastic find, especially for Tegan, who now becomes forever remembered by her classmates as the girl who found the dino tracks. But to imply that these tracks are millions of years old is absolute theory at best. From a creation standpoint, we can prove to the general public that these runoffs are in fact young. Moving along to our next story, Cameroon Expedition 2024. Remember Dave Wetzel? He has appeared on our network before. He is also known as Dino Dave. He is preparing for a return trip to the Cameroon in search of the elusive sauropod called the Mokelium Bembi. This is just one of the many names the natives call these creatures. He who stops the flow of rivers. These animals are living dinosaur sauropods. They have been seen for hundreds of years in equatorial Africa. Remember, there are over 600 dialects in the Cameroon alone, so if the people are seeing these creatures, then I feel we should take this as truth. Paleontologist Donald Prethero remarks that the quest for Mokeli and Bembe is part of the efforts by creationists to overthrow the theory of evolution and teaching of science by any means possible. Additionally, Prothero noted that the only people looking for Mokeli and Bembe are creationist ministers, not wildlife biologists. You know, that's a bit hypocritical, folks, to say that they'll stop at nothing to discredit evolution. Well, you know what? Evolutionists stop at nothing to discredit creation. And I would say the reason why most wildlife biologists don't want to venture forth is probably because they're too chicken it's more futile efforts to debunk the one true God, in my personal opinion. Wake up, guys. The network will be speaking with Dave Wetzel on one of our next programs slated for October. I do want to share his article from Genesis Park about his upcoming adventure. We are just three months away from a major expedition going back to the Cameroon to pursue the Mokelium Bembi the dinosaurian cryptid of equatorial Africa. The inflatable raft that we purchased, I'm holding a German-made electric onboard engine. Spread out on the dock to the right is a collapsible solar panel that will allow us to recharge our batteries. We are mainly planning to float down the Bumba River from the region near the small logging town of Yakadoma to the eastern Cameroon, to the village of Mulandau across the river from Congo, Brazzaville. So we will only use the electric onboard on certain occasions, avoiding islands, checking out the tributary, escaping from hippos, crocs, and dinosaurs. Notice the large propeller guard. Hopefully this will keep us from breaking a prop on the river bottom on the high rocks. Nonetheless, we plan to bring a spare propeller along with us. We will have various photographic tools, including motion-activated game cameras, a high-resolution camcorder, boat-mounted GoPros, and night vision. We are doing all we can to prepare, but we would appreciate your prayers for God's safety and provisions if we should encounter a living dinosaurian. Dave Watzel. Well, Dave, we will certainly be vigil about your upcoming expedition, and we look forward to having you back on the network to tell us all about it. Next story, why the CIA is trying to resurrect the woolly mammoth. 
Have you heard about this story? This is recent, but uh, it actually came out in December of 2023, late December. U.S. spy agency has invested a biotech firm trying to bring back extinct animals through DNA editing. Story broke in December of 2023. The CIA-founded company has joined high-profile investors, including Peter Thiel and Paris Hilton, in pumping money into the project to bring back the woolly mammoth. Hmm. The public portfolio of InQtel, the spy agency's investments arm, lists firms including Colossal Bioscience, which hopes to use advanced genetic sequencing to resurrect the giant Ice Age mammoth. The Intercepts reported... Colossal's goal is to see the woolly mammoth thunder upon the tundra once again, according to the Dallas-based company's website. So they're based in Dallas. There is no way to bring back the woolly mammoth as it was 10,000 years ago, said Live Science. But by using DNA testing tools, scientists can insert cold-resistant characteristics into the DNA sequence of modern elephants to create a proxy animal with mammoth-like characteristics. Oh, wow. Colossal is trying to bring back the Tasmanian tiger, also known as the thylacine, a wolf-like marsupial that was extinct in the 1930s. By the way, uh, folks, the Nahani Valley would say otherwise about what is supposedly extinct, as would P&G and Australia, granite tour in Australia. The company's stated motives are altruistic, if vague, said The Intercept. Colossal claims the bid to jumpstart nature's ancestral heartbeat can pave the way to rewild vital landscapes, ending the threat of extinction faced by many species currently in existence, having a positive net effect on carbon offset and supporting the local economies dependent on the targeted affected habitats. Really? The CIA, meanwhile, is less interested in thundering mammoths and roaring thylacines than it is the underlying genetic engineering technology that Colossal intends to develop according to live science. In September, Joe Biden signed an executive order to advance biotechnology towards innovative solutions in health, climate change, and economic security. Not everyone is convinced that Colossal's project can succeed. De extinction is a fairy tale of science, and more about media attention for scientists. Jeremy Austin's director of Australian Center for Ancient DNA told the Sydney Morning Herald. Gizmodo argued that whether you agree with the verdict depends on what you expect out of the process. Something mammoth like likely comes out of Colossal's work said the site. But whether the final result is akin to the work of Lazarus or Frankenstein is another matter. Finally, we turn our attention to cryptid footage. This one comes to us via Todd Neese, respected Bigfoot tracker and fellow Army veteran. Now, the imagery shows what could be the legendary Bigfoot, also known as a Sasquatch. No doubt that this is great footage. But is it genuine? Take a look for yourself. The alleged video footage was captured on a trail cam. One thing is for certain, though. Trail cams don't shake, especially from a distance. They also don't zoom in and out, or like constant vibration. I have to say this is vaguely familiar to the Sony Vitar channel on YouTube, only with a steady camera. Aside from Sasquatch, though, the network has a new pterosaur sighting in North Carolina. This would be our seventh sighting from the Tar Heel State within the past nine years. A man was out with his son, and the two of them witnessed a dimorphodon-type pterosaur fly out from the tree lines. Uh, we rarely receive cases involving these genus types of pterosaurians, dimorphodon macronics. Pterosaurs were diverse with many species adapted to different environments. They all had roughly the same body shape, but their heads, tail, and wing morphology differed significantly. Stay tuned. We may have them on the network later this month for case files. We hope you enjoyed this show. Seek the truth, and we will see you next time on The Roping Report.